Can you guess who I am? Wrong answers only. I was born in Anciano in 1452. I spent my early years with my mother but then lived in the household of my father, grandparents and uncle. My father went on to marry four times. I was known to be a huge animal lover. I even went vegetarian, which was very uncommon during my times. It is said I would buy animals from the markets just to set them free. Unlike most children, formal education held little sway over me. Numbers and letters were mere tools, but the world around me? That was a symphony waiting to be understood. My father, a respected notary, recognized the fire in my young eyes and sent me to the workshop of Andrea Verrocchio, the Florentine master. Sculpting, painting, metalwork, I soaked it all in. Milan, with its bustling streets and ambitious Sforza clan, proved to be my next canvas. From architect and engineer to court entertainer and, of course, sculptor, I wore many hats. The colossal equestrian statue of Francesco Sforza, destined to be the city's crown jewel, became my obsession. Years I poured into it, molding clay into a majestic form, only to see war shatter my dream. Cannons from the war destroyed this masterpiece. I found solace in The Last Supper, a mural that breathed life onto the walls of Milan's Santa Maria del Grazie. The apostles, their faces etched with emotion, gathered around Jesus, their expressions mirroring the turmoil within myself. Each brushstroke was a prayer. Then came Mona Lisa, the enigmatic woman with a smile that has captivated the world for centuries. Some call her Lisa del Giocondo, others a mere courtesan. But to me, she was an enigma, a canvas where I poured all my fascination with the human spirit, its depths and contradictions. Even today she resides in the Louvre, a silent testament to the power of art to transcend time and space. I then moved to France in 1516, where King Francis I welcomed me with open arms, but happiness remained elusive. I died in 1519.